All right, afternoon, VC. Uh, back on to do the usual bit of records that have come in recently. And a wide variety of genres represented here. Um, seems to be the deal lately. I've kind of been all over the place. Um, but that's a good thing. Uh, first up, I think this came from Craig Moore out in Portland. Uh, Los Crudos Canciones para Liberar Nuestras Fronteras. This is the Japanese press in the cloth bag, which is not something that pops up quite a bit. Uh, Sin Valor Punks was the label out of Japan. You can see that. Um, and it's on these uh, custom labels there. Uh, a lot of tracks. Great, aggressive Chicago punk. Um, I I think this copy was put out in 96. I could be wrong on the year. But uh, sure got me into these guys uh, when he played some of their stuff when I was out in California last June. And yeah, anything I see of theirs, I'm going to pick up. It, and their stuff rarely, rarely pops up. So might take a long time. But that was a. I was very pleased to come across that. Um, I think there's a there's an earlier press that's. Uh, U.S. Press, probably out of Chicago, that I'd like to find, but that that one's really cool with the uh, cloth bag. Here's a record I forgot to show in my last video. Um, I did grab this when I was up at Noble to uh, have, well, Dylan was showing me those crazy uh, Zamrock records he got in. Um, that's Soundgarden, Bad Motorfinger. Uh, this was Dylan's personal copy before he upgraded to a US copy. This is a Europe press from 91. Um, but I didn't have this on vinyl at all, so I was happy to grab this as well from Mr. Dillon, another one of his hand-me-downs, which is not a problem. a and Records, one of the most badass records ever made. Uh, Kim Thale is a god to me. Uh, still, you know, it, this this still holds up so many great songs rusty cage outshined room a thousand years wide is a favorite on here um yeah this is absolutely killer uh next another one influenced by sherv uh he sent me this text with a with pictures of these records because um, I think I asked him what else he had on the shelves that I wasn't aware of um, that's uh, Fearless Iranians from Hell Die for Allah and this is uh, some crazy punk from uh, hardcore stuff from San Antonio Texas um, and he <laughs> sure of being Iranian um, I mean he he picked up a bunch of these when he saw them really cheap years ago um, and now they're going for quite a bit uh, I really had to search to find an affordable copy um, but I did so that was really cool um, this is love the guitar on this good vocals too um, never knew San Antonio had this kind of scene well, this is from 86 87 around there and it's on um, a German label. So it was odd. I got this really cheap from Germany. Um, the inner sleeve is still intact, in good shape, and the record is mint. So this rarely got any play. It's on red wax. Um, so very pleased to find this record. Um, there's a couple more from them that I'd like to track down, but. Uh, prices are just way over the top. I'll mess with that later. Um, so, that's that. Uh, next, we move into Krautrock. Uh, and this is all Dom's fault. Um, he featured the early Kraftwerk stuff in a couple of videos recently. And I know my friend Joe digs some of their stuff. Um, I can't get into the later stuff. It's not not my bag. But the live video he showed, I really dug the drums. 
and the whole deal with you know live the live band deal with it and so yeah the first craft work on Phillips is the 1970 Germany pressing uh, this came all the way from Latvia um, and I'd like to find number two to go with this but it's way too pricey and way too crazy to find so so far no luck with that so I'm gonna try to wait until one pops up in the States cheap but we'll we'll see how that goes it's hard to get these but yeah craft work this is love love this shit the early stuff but not so big on the later stuff um, and this is a record that um, Alex had championed a long time ago um, as one of his favorite jazz records and I took note of it and then started looking for it that was a few years back and it just wasn't it's one of those unattainable records and I remember when we got out when I got out there out uh, of California um, he had seen a copy on the wall at Amoeba and we were gonna go to Amoeba the next day and it had already sold but I think they wanted uh, three or four hundred dollars for it and that was I wasn't gonna buy it anyway at that price but um, so I waited and waited and waited and waited and Carolina Soul people slept on it and it went for a shit ton cheaper than it does right now I mean the cheapest copy I had seen was this seller in Georgia who's a good seller I think it's Wall Street out of Athens or maybe another one out of Atlanta but they got it for like two hundred dollars which is still freaking high so to get it for nearly half that there it is Byron Lancaster it's not up to us um, and I like when he plays sax on this better than he than when he's playing flute um, but there's some, there's some this is a killer killer record on Vortex from 1968 um, in fantastic shape as far as the I think it maybe went cheaper because the cover's got a it's got a you know the bullet hole through it and the it's got a damaged corner so I think that had a lot to do with how cheap it went for um, it's on the purple Vortex label but the record is really nice and sounds fantastic uh, so I was very happy to I've had a lot of good luck with Carolina Soul um, and with them uh, I tend to watch a lot of auctions with them and then if I see the prices and bids go crazy I just bail I just get off but this one I couldn't believe how I thought I thought I'd, my bid would be tripled easily without question and so got very lucky to pull that one Carolina Soul um, and then last but not least I uh, just got one uh, small dig at lunchbox this week in and I found this in the seven inch section because I always go through the seven inch arrivals first uh, load pastures day on faceless records out of Hollywood Florida so Dave Sequoia Flames has been showing all his crazy Florida punk seven inches that he's been collecting. And this was one that he had highly recommended, this band Load. Said it's one of his favorites. So there was this sitting there for three dollars. So I grabbed it. And it's it's good. It's good shit. It's good hardcore punk. Um from Florida, where it's hot. Um this one's on black. This, this comes in a di couple different colors from what I'm seeing on Discogs, but I just have the Black Varietal. Pastures Day from Load. I think this is from the 93, maybe. Can't remember. 90s. And then I've got uh, this used gem. Uh, Beaver Harris 360 degree music experience uh, beautiful Africa on the soul note label uh, from 1979 this was only pressed the one time um, a lot of the soul note titles have never been reissued and so this was a great find um, there's only really a couple copies out there available um, so for this this I think was one of the last pieces of the guy that dumped a lot of his uh, collection 
the Scott that had a lot of Japanese stuff in it. But um, Creation Moncore the Thirds here, which drew me in on trombone. Uh, Beaver Harris is a monster on the drums on this. Cameron Brown is featured on the B side on the bass quite a bit, and he stands out on that. And then on the front side, the piano really stands out from Ron Burton. Ken McIntyre is playing a variety of things here, flute, bassoon, alto. Um, I dig his alto the best on it, but um, this is a modal monster of a record. I mean, this is fucking killer record, and it's diverse. They, they jam. Uh, wow. Yeah, I was blown away with this one. Um, absolutely blown away with this record. This is getting a lot of spins. This is top shelf shit right here. 1979 on Soul Note from Italy. Beaver Harris, 360 degree music experience. Uh, beautiful Africa. Highly recommend. And then the last record um, I picked up based on the pipe sticker. Pulled a, pulled a gym, Rufus. Um, and I got this Middle Eastern Rock, John Berberian and the Rock East Ensemble. And few reasons other reasons I picked this up one great cover draws you in two it's on um, modern harmonic and well in combination with verb forecast modern harmonic does God's work when it comes to putting out reissues they're freaking at the top for me and yeah this is uh, yeah what's it say crazed time signatures abound as musicians from the West look east for inspiration, infusing their rock and jazz sounds with vibes looted from India and the Far East. A true marriage of Western and Middle Eastern music with a fuzzed out psychedelic edge. And that's exactly what you get. Um, really like the first cut, the Oud and the Fuzz is the name of the song. Another, just, it's freaking great. Um, on the B-side, Flying High, the second track is amazing. Um, the last track has vocals. And I think it's sung in Armenian. Um, I could be wrong about that, but it's still it's super dope. The drums are really dope on that last one um, as well. Um, Joe Beck on guitar it slays on this record. Um, it's uh, it's kind of a one-off. Um, not sure when this... I think it was originally released in 69. And I don't think he did another record like this. I think he's... Living in the States now, though, and I think he's still playing the Oud. I think he's in Massachusetts, this John Barbarian. This is this is dope. Um, cheap record, too, um, as far as this reissue is concerned, so I recommend it. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's everything for this week. Hope you're well. Peace.